In this video, we'll use the three steps to sketch method for basic tangent graphs to graph y equals tangent of 4x. So we have our method outlined on the left, and here's our equation in grid. And we can see our equation is in the form y equals a tangent of bx. We don't have any shifting going on here. We can use our basic tangent graph method. So let's jump in. Step one, we'll find our essential information. So we'll identify A and B first. So A is an understood one in front of tangent. A is your vertical stretch or compression factor. Here it's one, so it is identical to the parent function, y equals tangent x, in terms of there's no vertical stretch or shrink on it. Um, but that you can also think of A as the term that's going to shape the curve and how steep it looks. And it's going to set those points that are in between the x-intercepts and the asymptotes. All right, so we have A. B is the coefficient of x, so that is 4 in this case. And B tells us how many cycles of tangent will happen between 0 and pi. And it also helps us calculate the period. So remember, for tangent, we calculate the period taking pi and dividing by 4. Okay, tangent's the special one. Pi divided by b. So pi divided by 4 in our case. All right. So now that we have this, we can choose our scale labels. And we know we intentionally choose especially our horizontal label so that our key points will... will all align nicely with our tick marks. This ensures our graph is divided into four equal pieces. We do this by taking our period and dividing by four. Okay, four key points, four pieces of the cycle. Okay, so I'm showing here pi over four times one fourth because sometimes that's just a little nicer to look at than divided by four. Okay, so we will count our horizontal axis by pi over 16. All right, and before we do that, our vertical scale, nice and easy. A is one, let's use one. Okay, let's go ahead and label our axes and we'll come back to asymptotes. So we'll count by pi over 16 to label our horizontal tick marks. So we have one pi over 16, two pi over 16, which reduces to pi over eight, three pi over 16, four pi over 16, which reduces to pi over four. I like to pause here. The with this method and with this setup, our fourth horizontal tick mark to the right of the origin should match the period. It's a great way to check yourself, make sure you're on the right track. Um, our period's pi over four, our fourth tick mark's pi over four. We're doing well. All right, and then we'll keep going. We had four pi over 16, so now we have five pi over 16. Okay, and we can have almost identical labels for the other side, we just have negative signs. So let's go ahead and tackle that negative pi over four and negative five pi over 16. All right, let's label our vertical axis counting by ones. All right, so we've got our grid labeled up. The last thing we wanna do before we move into plotting our key points is find our asymptotes. Now, there are two ways you can go about this. You can use, since this is a basic tangent graph, you can use the formula. So that's x equals pi over 2b. So pi over 2 times our b is 4, so that'll be 8, plus pi over bk, so pi over 4k. And this is where k is an integer. I like to use the shorthand k belongs to the set of all integers. You can just write k is an integer. And this is an equation that's going to generate every single asymptote that's on our graph. Of course, they're infinite because this graph continues on forever. Um, but say you let k equal to zero, you would see it would generate the asymptote. There's going to be one at pi over eight. Okay. Um, we'll look a little bit more at this after we have our graph. Um, but the other way you can find asymptotes, and I like this way best, probably because it will work for every single tangent equation you have. I like to know the equation, or excuse me, I like to know the asymptotes for the parent tangent graph, y equals tangent x. I know that those are at pi over two plus pi k. 
So what you can do is take your horizontal transformation or your input of your tangent function and set that equal to those asymptotes. So I'll show that up above just so it stays out of our way. So take 4x and set it equal to pi over 2 plus pi k. And then you simply solve for x. So to do that, we would need to divide everything by 4. So divided by 4, I'll say divided by 4 or times 1 fourth, and divided by 4. Okay, what that's going to simplify into is x equals pi over 8 plus pi over 4. Okay. So you see we got the same thing we did using the formula. Um, I just like this a little bit better because you don't have to memorize a formula. Um, most of us already know where the asymptotes are for y equals tangent x, and if you don't, it's a great thing to go ahead and commit to memory. Um, but I think that it's nice because it just works every single time with a little bit of algebra. Um, there is a video specifically about this. I'll put the link in the video description. Um, so if you want to see a little bit more about this trick, you can check that out. Um, I think once you use this a couple of times, you'll like it a lot better than the formula. Um, either way works, but um, you have options. All right, so we have our asymptotes. Another really good thing to know is that your first positive asymptote um, for these basic tangent graphs should happen at your second horizontal tick mark. So that's right here at pi over eight. Um, and like we've already said, if you let k equal zero for your asymptotes equation, you'll see x equals pi over eight. Um, so we should feel really good. Everything's matching up nicely. Um, we're getting consistent information. We are on the right track. We are well on our way. All right, so that is our essential information. We have done most of the work already. All right, so let's move to step two where we plot our key points. So we know our pattern for tangent is a little bit different because it has that asymptote that interrupts um, the continuity of the function, but it will go zero and then curve setting point, asymptote, another curve setting point, and then repeat. Okay, so we'll start at the origin because this is an unshifted graph. Okay, so zero. Our curve setting point happens at the first horizontal tick mark and it has the y coordinate for whatever a's value is. So in this case, it's one. Okay, we know we have a vertical asymptote at pi over eight at our next tick mark. And then we have our other curve setting point. This time the y coordinate will be the opposite value of a. So we'll have a point at three pi over six comma negative one. All right, and then you would repeat the pattern. So I'm going to ahead and go ahead and put my next zero at pi over four because that's where the cycle, the next cycle will start. All right, so that's the tangent pattern, the basic tangent pattern, and we can sketch in our tangent curve now, step three. All right. So we have a split cycle of tangent here, and I say split cycle just because that asymptote happens in the middle. Now I'll go ahead and show in another color. So in orange, I'm going to repeat this green pattern that we have. So that's the nice thing about trig functions. They're periodic, which means they're repetitive or cyclic. So once you have one cycle, you can simply repeat that as many times as you need to, to the right and to the left and you'll get as many cycles as you need. So starting at pi over four, we have a zero, and all we really have space for is that next curve setting point, okay, but we know that it's going to eventually follow up along a vertical asymptote. That'd be at six pi over 16 or three pi over eight. Okay, let's go in the other direction. Um, so you can either move four tick marks to the left and then start your cycle. So you could go zero, curve setting point, asymptote, and then the negative curve setting point, okay? Or you could just copy the pattern working backward, whichever you like more, okay? So let's sketch in our tangent curve here, okay? And we'll put one more point here just to show that it would continue on. There would be another asymptote at the next tick mark to the left. So that'd be at negative six pi over 16 or negative three pi over eight if you reduce it. All right, so this is two and a half of three full cycles um, if we showed the asymptotes of tangent four x. 
Now, before we conclude, let's jump back to that asymptotes equation. So I'll just use the one that's written right here. And I want to show you, so we said K can be any integer and that will generate different asymptotes along this graph. So let's say we wanted, we already did K equals zero and that gave us the green vertical asymptote at pi over eight. But let's say we let K equal to negative one. Okay, if we did that, our new equation would be x equals pi over eight plus pi over four times negative one. Okay, so whatever you let k equal, you substitute in. So we end up actually with pi over eight minus pi over four, or if we get a common denominator, that's two pi over eight. And so we would see that the asymptote that's generated when k is negative one is actually negative pi over eight. Okay, so that's this one right here. So as you substitute in different values of k, you'll be locating different vertical asymptotes along your graph. Um, so it's actually a really clever way to write, the, write just one equation that will give you all the asymptotes. Because if you tried to list them out, you'd be listing numbers forever. You'd be stuck in your math class forever. Um, but with this little equation, once you learn how to use it, it's actually really, really efficient. Um, and it's really helpful to find whichever asymptote you need. All right, so this was using three steps to sketch to get your unshifted tangent graph, y equals tangent 4x. Um, check out the links in the video description. Um, like I said, there's one there that'll dig a little deeper into that asymptotes trick, and that does work even if you have shifted tangent graphs. Um, and there are also links to a bunch of other trig functions and lots of other examples to help you out. Good luck, and thanks for watching.